These children are handicapped, some of them severely. Some are nearly blind. Some have severe physical handicaps. On different days, you can find here autistic children, spastics, the educationally subnormal. In fact, every type of handicap, mental and physical. They are learning to grow and to develop in an extraordinary new playground in London. Of all the new work which is being done in Britain today for handicapped children, nothing is more dramatic than this. And it is the creation of one remarkable woman, Marjorie Allen. Lady Allen of Hurtwood, to give her her full title, is no idle member of the aristocracy. She has built an international reputation as a propagandist for children's play and for the theory of play. Above all, she gets things done. Since her latest work on play for handicapped children is based on her earlier work on unconventional playgrounds for normal children, like this one, it's worth going back to the origins of this kind of play theory. <laughs> I'm really a landscape architect by profession, and I've always been interested in the places where people live, their environment, but especially the children, and I think they get a pretty raw deal. What do we give them in our great cities and towns? Built up with asphalt. We give them an asphalt square playground with a few pieces of mechanical equipment. And there they're expected to spend all their adolescent lives swinging backwards and forwards on a swing. It's just not good enough. And it's a problem that had to be solved somehow. Well, then I had a lucky break. I got to Copenhagen in 1945, just after the Great War. And there I saw the first waste material playground in the world. And I realized in a sort of blinding flash of understanding that they'd really solved the problem because there was a playground that had been made entirely by the children themselves. So when I got back to England, uh, we were all determined to start them over here. created the adventure playgrounds we know them in this country today and I think it's opened people's eyes really to what children really want to do in their leisure time. You see here they can play with very dangerous tools, they can create their own houses, their own climbing frames, they can take really dangerous risks and overcome them and above all it's a place where they can meet their friends, where they can make new friends in a very free and permissive atmosphere. After we'd created 30 or 40 adventure playgrounds up and down the country, we were very troubled that there was a large group of children that were being excluded from this opportunity to play. And I speak, of course, of the many thousands of handicapped children in this country. That was the gap that had to be filled. And that's why we've created this playground here in London, an adventure playground for handicapped children. Creating it wasn't so easy. There was an assumption that mentally and physically handicapped children needed such special provision that they couldn't be let loose like normal children. But Lady Allen is no respecter of assumptions, so she begged funds and borrowed a site in London's Chelsea. She put up a mass of outdoor equipment, a low building, put in trained play leaders, and cheerfully opened for business. She got more customers than she bargained for, and the applause of parents, doctors, and researchers in the field of handicapped children. The children come in the term time from their special schools in groups. And in the holiday time, uh, they come, all the mixed handicaps together, perhaps with their fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters. And so keen are they to get here, some of them, that they, we find that they even come on public transport alone, which we think is a great tribute to this playground. We've tried to create a, 
a simple environment with plenty of space, which is what these children need, I think almost more than anything. A charming situation, there are many trees and grass and hills and water. And at every point, they, these children meet some kind of challenge which uh, sets them going. We want them also to be as free as possible from adult supervision, because I think, and I think other people think with me, that many of these children are needlessly overprotected by adults and never given any freedom to explore and to experiment and to uh, find out what the world's all about. <laughs> oh, I think I'm you go down and get our sticks now. You okay? <laughs> Many of these children, because of the situation in which they find themselves, um, live in a world of fantasy, and I think many of them find it very difficult to sort out the difference between fact and fantasy. And we think that here they can help, be helped to build up a, a, a more realistic picture of the, of, of the real world. And if they are so overprotected that they never meet these challenges, and are able to take these risks, I think they'll be the poorer for it when they grow up. When they set their heart on doing something, uh, which may be beyond their capabilities, they'll stay at it and stick at it until they've achieved it. And this builds up a tremendous sense of self-confidence in themselves, which is really quite fascinating to watch. I'm amazed at their tremendous courage. It's fantastic to see them uh, undertaking um, projects here, which not even their teachers who come with them thought they were capable of doing. purpose of this playground is primarily that children shall be happier when they leave than when they came. And that I think you can see. You very rarely see a bored child here. All our experience goes to show that a child that is unhappy in whatever situation it may be, uh, is not able to learn, is not able to benefit from the experience around him. And the majority of these children are not only unhappy because of the situation in which they live, uh, but that they're tremendously frustrated because people feel uh, that they're not able to cope with these problems with which they've got to be faced in later life. And therefore, happiness and the learning situation is, to me, very important indeed. Why did you open a new team? Parallel with Lady Allen's imaginative leap to help handicapped children through play, the medical world is tackling the problems in new ways. This centre, attached to Guy's Hospital in London, is an assessment centre for handicapped children and a research and teaching unit for the new specialty of developmental paediatrics. These specialists are, in a relaxed atmosphere, assessing Elizabeth's motor skills. Her left side is handicapped. She has muscles there, but no feedback of information from them. They know what is wrong. Now they're trying to establish how it is affecting her development and working on new ways of compensating her. The thing that is new here is that this centre brings together into one unit a number of specialists in different fields, so that instead of a particular handicap being studied in isolation from the rest of the child, here they build up a profile of all the child's physical and mental capacities. A feature of this work is that they can identify the secondary handicaps which so often go with a major one, 
and can guard against the errors of misdiagnosis. Their aim is to find out exactly what is wrong, and they've developed new techniques to measure how a child is developing. The wear on Elizabeth's shoes is a clue to how she walks. Just like a car, you can tell how well it runs by the tire wear, and you can do the same for people by the way in which they wear their shoes down. Hmm. Well, you can see how she's wearing her heels all around here, but on this left side, there's only the inside of the heel being worn down. It's got very tight, and this is all part of the it. soft concrete. Painting her feet with photographic developer and standing her on sensitive paper gives a simple but accurate measurement of her weight distribution, which reflects muscle function. Right to lift you. Ready. Up. There we go. Stand up straight. Yeah. Ready. Ready. Up. Oh, yeah. All right. Yes. Look at that. Yeah. Oh, oh, In another session, her mental development is checked and other specialists will check other features. These comprehensive reviews have been going on since Elizabeth was six months old, which is when they like to start. The assessment centre was started only eight years ago, but now has a reputation which brings anxious parents from all over the world. And the aim is that eventually similar centres will cover Britain, to check patients referred to them from the regular screening of all children carried out by the family doctor. The attitude being expressed here by the National Health Service and at Lady Allen's Adventure Playground is that we must look again at mentally and physically handicapped children, assess them earlier and help them more. The job is to help them play the fullest part in a normal world. The playground is a stepping stone to normal experiences where many children learn for the first time about getting wet, about fire and water, about the texture of grass and concrete, about speed and danger. The playground is still young, and many research programs are in progress on its work. Meanwhile, its founder, Lady Allen, is watching progress, spreading her ideas, and no doubt looking for some new gap to fill. The playground's only been open for three months, and we're learning every moment of the day. In fact, it's as much a challenge to us as it is to the children. I've got a feeling that you've got to try everything once. If it works, wonderful. If it doesn't work, scrap it and try something else. But you've got to try these experiments and we do hope that other people will try them too. I've no doubt myself that this is going to be a triumphant success.